Over 2,000 years ago, the Roman Empire, obviously based from Rome and Italy, was growing strong, actually spread across all of Europe and good parts of Africa and Asia as well. So the Roman Empire went far and wide. But the emperor at the time, in the year 1st century BCE, was Augustus. He had a problem. Out of those far outreach corners of the empire, they still had to build roads and buildings and aquifers and so forth, and that cost money. He needed to raise money to actually build construction and the far out regions of the empire. How is he going to do that? And he invented the idea of a tax. He said, okay, Roman citizens, to help pay for the growing Roman Empire, I'm going to levy a tax. So whenever you're at the market or at an auction site or something like that and money changes hands, I would like you to give one part per kentum, per 100 of that money to the government. So they spend 100 gold coins and I, I'm buying on a, some herd of sheep or something for 100 gold coins. I exchange that money to my, my, my merchant there. Oh, one part of those hundreds have to go to the government. One coin goes to the government. Or something costs 200 gold coins, there's 100, there's 100, one part per 100 goes to the government. Oh, there'll be one coin there, one coin there, two coins go to the 100 out of 200. So one part per kentum went to the government to fund the building of the Roman Empire 2,000 years ago. Well, of course, taxes never went away. We still have taxes to this, to this day, and we still think in terms of per kentum, per 100. In fact, the word we use now is percentage rather than per kentum. Percentage. That means per 100. So a percentage is simply a fraction out of 100. Now, accountants all through those millennia, 2,000, 2,100 years, were actually writing in their account books, per kentum, per kentum, per kentum. They got tired of writing the long words per kentum over and over again. They often abbreviated something like PC or other language and so forth, PC. But even then, that became a little bit cumbersome and people started doing even shorthand for that. And basically you got like a couple of curved symbols and a, and a straight line. Somehow it evolved over the centuries to become this symbol for per kentum, per kentum. There it is. And that's what we associate with the symbol for percentage to this day. All right, so I think the first um, text that we know of that actually used the symbol extensively was about 1425, an Italian text. So this has been around for a good 600 years now, and we still have it to this day. All right, so what does that mean? So this means per 100, literally percentage per 100. So if I say 5%, I mean five per 100. I literally mean the fraction with denominator 100. That's all that means, denominator 100. Um, actually, I'll make that fraction look a little bit simpler. If I multiply that by five and multiply that by, sorry, a fifth and a fifth, I can see I divide the top by five gives me one, divide the bottom by five gives me 20. That's really the fraction 1 20th, if you like. Uh, if I did something like 150%, um, that is the fraction 150 per kentum. Okay, 150 per 100 is the fraction 150 one hundredths. Okay, um, I can make that a little bit simpler. Multiply by 1 50th, divide by 50, divide by 50. That'll be 3 on the top and 2 on the bottom. It's really the fraction 1 and a half. So 150% is 1 and a half. Great, fabulous. Even awkward things like 375 uh, 37.5% would be the fraction, oh, 37.5 per kentum, per 100. It's the fraction 37.5 over 100. If you don't like decimals in your top lines, multiply the top by 10, bottom by 10, there's really 375 out of 1,000, if you like. And I'm sure you can actually rewrite that too if you want to. Grand, grand. Um, let me go backwards. Let's start with a fraction and see if we can write it as a percentage. That is something like 1 half. Now, percentage means per 100. So I want, don't want a denominator of two, I want a denominator of 100. How am I gonna make that happen? Well, our brain says, let's use this basic belief here. We can actually change fractions a little bit. If I multiply the bottom by 50, aha, and multiply the top by 50 to keep it balanced, so it's the same fraction, I see now I have the fraction 50 on top, and now I have 100 on the bottom. So this must be, oh, it's 50 parts per 100, it is 50%. Beautiful, one half is 50%. Oh, this is grand. Well, maybe something like three fifths. So my challenge here is, can I rewrite this as a fraction with 100 on the bottom? And five seems nice to me, and I think, oh, yes, I can. If I multiply that by 20, that'll get me to 100. And to keep the fraction unchanged, I better multiply the top by 100 as well. So now I can see this is really 60 parts per, whoops, 100. It's actually 60 parts per 100, 60%. Great. Um, fractions don't need to be that nice. For example, James, please rewrite three sevenths as a percentage. Okay, I look at that and I think, oh, oh, that one's got me worried. So I don't see a natural way to change that to a denominator of 100. 
and I start to have a little panicky feeling in, inside my tummy. But let me just you know, see if I can do something nonetheless. Um, what am I going to do? Well, actually, let me rewrite this fraction with a really nice denominator. I'm going to write with a denominator of 1. I'm going to think of this as 3 sevenths over 1. Because then I know how to make that be 100. Multiply that by 100, and multiply the top by 100, and bingo, I now have a, a fraction with a denominator of 100. Just the top is kind of weird. Uh, so 100 times 3 sevenths would be, multiply the numerator, it would be 300 sevenths on the top. Oh, okay, so that's it. So it's 300 sevenths per 100. So the answer is that 3 7 is actually 300 sevenths percent. It's that fraction per 100. Great. Uh, 300 sevenths, that's kind of weird. Um, okay, actually, I make that a little, little bit simpler. I might write that as a mixed number. So my brain says, okay, how many sevens go into 300? And my brain says, well, 300 is really a 280. Uh, that's 40 sevens. Uh, plus an extra 7, plus an extra 7 gets me 287, 294, plus 6 left over. So it's 40 sevens plus another 7 plus another. So it's 42 sevens and 6 left over. So when I write this as a mixed number, this is 42 and 6 sevenths. There it is, a mixed number percent. 3 sevenths, the fraction 3 sevenths is actually 42 and 6 sevenths percent. Did it. So I had to do some sneaky work there to figure out how to get a denominator of 100, but it all fell into place, just followed my nose. Just make it a denominator of 100, that's all percent means. That part per 100. Grand. All right, so let me clean the board and do some uh, typical uh, examples of how percentages appear in, I know, textbook problems in life. Back in a moment. Okay, so here's our practice question. Yesterday, a bowl of nice and spicy soup cost $1.50. Today, it cost $1.80. The price went up. What is the percent increase in the price? Okay, percent increase. These sorts of questions always makes me nervous. Percent increase, percent decrease. I've got to make sure I really know what I'm talking about and I can only just say, think your way through it and just try to make sure you understand the English, which is not always easy. Um, but, okay, first of all, I understand. There definitely was an increase in price. Like the word increase makes sense. I went from $1.50 to $1.80. It went up 30 cents. So there was an increase in price of 30 cents. Um, okay, but they want the percent increase, not the actual increase. All right. Uh, let me just be very clear, uh, that looks scary, but remember, a percent is just a fraction. It's a fraction with denominator 100. So maybe the question's better just read as, what is the fraction increase in the price? Well, the actual increase, the actual increase was 30 cents, um, and that was out of, out of uh, the percent increase. Out of, I guess my base thing, I'm actually curious, I was that yesterday, and now it's increased from that. So I guess I'm thinking about that amount from $1.50. Out of $1.50, but since I'm talking about cents, let me think of this as 150 cents. All right, so the increase was 30 cents out of 150 cents. What fraction is that increase? Aha! The fraction is, the fraction is 30 out of 150. Okay, that's the fraction increase in the price. I went up by 31 fiftieths. Um, okay, I can make that a little bit simpler. Divide the top and bottom by 10, that is multiply by tenths. That's 3 and 15, so that's really 3 fifteenths. Uh, this is really, uh, what, uh, 5 times 3, and that's really 1 times 3, so that's actually really 1 fifth. Okay, 1 fifth. What was the fraction increase in price? 1 fifth. It went up by 1 fifth of the price. Bingo, gorgeous. Except the question wasn't fraction, it was actually percent. It says, all right, please write your fraction with denominator 100. All right, so I have to just rewrite, rewrite that with denominator 100, and I think multiplying by 20, and 20 will do the trick. That gives me 20 one hundredths, which means the answer is actually 20%. The fraction increase is actually 20%. The percent increase is 20%. Beautiful, great, we did it, lovely. Okay, let's do one more example. It's actually got two parts. First part, what is 25% of 32? And the second part is, what is 32% of 25? Let's switch the numbers around. Okay, let's do this. Okay, first of all, A. What is, well, percentage. 25%, that's a fraction. What is 25 per 100? That's, what is 25 one hundredths of 32? So there's the question. Let's read the fraction 25 one hundredths. What is 25 one hundredths of 32? That seems hard until I realize, oh, I, this is really 25 times 1, this is really 25 times 4, that's really actually the fraction 1 quarter. What is 1 quarter of 32? And if you think of like 32 kittens, 1 quarter of them would be 8 of them. The answer is 8. 
But let me just point out that the word of, we actually did show earlier, there's a beautiful coincidence that how we think of of in everyday life actually does match the mechanics of how we developed multiplying fractions. A beautiful coincidence. So, you know, if you want to be sort of like really true to the mechanics of fractions here, one quarter of 32 would be one quarter times 32. And then you just have to multiply fractions now. This will be 32 over four. I don't know why I'm doing this in this really long winded way, but I'm just showing you everything's consistent. Um, let's see, um, that's uh, four times uh, eight, and that's four times one. Fours cancel, eight over one, yes, it really is eight. A quarter of 32 really is eight, no matter what route you use to get there. Grand. All right, that was part A, that's the first one. Part B, what is, is uh, this fraction, 32% of 25? What fraction is that? 32 per centum, 32 over 100. That's the fraction of 25. All right, that's now messier. That's now messier. Let me give me some more space here. Get rid of that so it's less visually cluttered. Uh, let me just record the answer eight there because I shouldn't erase my answer at least. All right, but I've got this. What is 32 one hundredths of 25? I can't in my brain see how to do that using my intuition. So I can use the mechanics of fractions. That's fine, I'll do it. Answer. And that happy coincidence where of actually has the same mechanics as multiplying fractions. Amazing. Uh, 32 one hundredths times the fraction 25, 25 over one if you like. And I have to work with that. Um, okay, I'll work with it. 32 times 25, all over 100. Uh, this is really 25 times one. That's really 25 times four. Uh, uh, uh. So I'm left with, oh, 32 on the top, four on the bottom. Uh, 32 over four, I feel like I've been there before. That also equals eight. Oh, what a lovely coincidence.